Hey y'all, welcome back to this week's episode of AMA Friday with Amy Miller, recruiting in yoga pants. All right, so this week I'm gonna ask you to do a real hard thing. It was definitely hard for me, <laughs> will be hard for me. <laughs> I want us to check our emotion at the door for this topic. This is gonna be tough because this, this actually enrages me because this feels very manipulative. And I realized that I was also being manipulated. I, I was letting myself get worked up and get angry and, you know, get frustrated. And I was ready to like come in, you know, guns blazing and no, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna play into that this week. We're going to factually discuss the details and the additional information and context around this idea. And I will hopefully give you some things to think about so that you can move forward and make the decision that is best for you as a job seeker. I do not get to tell you what roles you should or should not apply to. That is not my decision to make. My job is to help you understand how recruiting works, how hiring happens, and give you my suggestions based on 25 years in the industry. What you do with that information is completely up to you. I will not say, don't ever do this, always do that, because those are, you know, look, only a Sith deals in absolutes, okay? Just saying. Let's get to the point. So we are once again hearing from the thought leaders that you should never apply to a role that you meet 100% of the qualifications for because if you do, you will be bored. This is what they're saying again. This is not new. It's, it's, it's like group your floats, you know, some ding dong on TikTok thinks they invented it. I, I no. I've personally been enjoying those since the 70s. So no, that's not new. <laughs> and neither is this job search strategy. That's my point. So if you meet 100% of the qualifications, you should not apply to the role because you'll be bored. This is what we're going to unpack. And again, there are two specific things that I have an issue with here. One is context and the second is additional information. So let's dig in. So when I'm talking about context, my first question for you is, what requirements? You say, if you meet 100% of the requirements for the role, don't apply. What requirements? Until you can answer that question, I am not entertaining this discussion. I am going to do what I should have done all along and I'm gonna scroll right past and I'm gonna ignore it because you don't know what you're talking about. Now, if you want to give me context around the requirements, let, let's have that discussion. I know for a fact that any applicants for any of the roles I've personally recruited for in the last 12 years, any applicants who did not meet 100%, that's right, 100% of the basic qualifications, I would disposition that person's candidacy on that requisition. Sometimes I would find a different role that they fit or, you know, I'm not saying those things don't happen, but I am saying with no hesitation or reservation that if you do not meet 100% of the basic qualifications, I will reject you. Your arguments with the government, y'all, not with me, okay? This is compliance, this is OFCCP, this is general recruiting best practices, like, I may have 10 other candidates who meet the basic qualifications and then some. Why would I call you and not them? It's, I mean, again, check your emotion. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> Just laying out the facts, okay? So that's important context. What requirements are we talking about? Secondly, in the context theme, do the requirements even make sense? I talked about this as well. I'm gonna link a bunch of various videos up above as we go through this. So may wanna bookmark those for later or go back and watch them. But another thing to consider is do the requirements even make sense? Because a lot of times we'll see these ridiculous, you know, 20 requirements and 
you know, it's uh, must be a team player and a must like apples. And the, uh, I don't know what that has to do with the job, but okay, maybe I don't meet any of those. Who cares? They're fake requirements. Ignore those. So, you know, you get to decide, right? Do, do I meet these? Do I not meet these? Do I care? Apply to whatever you want. But keep in mind that role specific, measurable, valid requirements typically must be met 100% if they are basic or minimum. Preferred is, of course, something slightly different. So check out the videos on those. I'll drop a couple things up there um, that you can take a look at. Now let's get into the additional information. This is where we're really going to put on our thinking caps here. Let's pretend that I'm looking at a job, a new role for a recruiter. And let's say that this role requires at least five years of experience in recruiting. Okay, check, got that, and then some. And it requires, um, you know, knowledge of various ATSs and CRMs, check, worked with a lot of different systems. And maybe it wants somebody with experience uh, developing high volume staffing plans. Cool. Check, I've done that a few times in my career. I meet 100% of the qualifications. Am I gonna be bored? Oh, but there's preferred. Okay, maybe, maybe we should talk about preferred. Maybe preferred qualifications are something like um, preferred that you've worked in tech. Oh yeah, I've done that, okay, no problem. And maybe it's also preferred that uh, you've recruited internationally. I've done a little bit of that. Not a ton, not a ton, but I've done a little bit. I, I can definitely say I've done some Europe and Canada, Mexico, definitely made placements there over the years, various companies. I'm still at 100%. Am I bored yet? So here's my question to you. Okay, this is the information that I have. This is what I know. I've not applied yet, I've not interviewed. Maybe I don't know anybody at the company yet. I don't know, I have to go check my network. But based on that information alone, hi Papa, we're saying that the fact that I meet those qualifications is an automatic guarantee that I'll be bored. Are we sure? <laughs> because here's what I know. There are often bigger, juicier, meatier problems to be solved than what can be laid out in the job description. The job description is something that's had to go through HR and legal a lot of times. It's maybe copied and pasted from various sources. It's like just, we're just trying to get the basics out there so we can start getting a pipeline built. It in no way is an exhaustive list of like literally every single thing you're gonna do. So the fact that I would have the audacity to look at that list and go, oh, I check all those boxes. I mean, gosh, what a boring job, right? That seems silly to me. So for me, I'm gonna need more context. And so for a job like that, I'm like, hmm, international, hmm, high volume staffing plan. You know, this, this could be interesting. I've done it. I've done it before for sure. Pop up once out. <laughs> Just a sec. I've done it before. I can do it again. Will I be bored? Friends, best way to find out, get yourself in the interview process and ask those questions. But to rule myself out automatically because I'm already in the top 10 or 20% of applicants because I actually am qualified and not even give myself a chance to learn more about the job and what the growth could be or what the learnings could be or where I could stretch because a list of requirements told me I'd be bored. That feels a little silly and if you have concerns about that, I invite you to research my friends Dunning and Kruger and their effect. Okay, just food for thought. So think about that. 
Let me know what you think. I would love to have a deeper conversation in the comments about this. There's a lot more we could unpack, but I want to kind of keep it there. So let me know, have you applied to a role that you met all the qualifications for and were you bored? Because it hasn't happened to me yet, but I'm also one to raise my hand and ask for other shit to do and to grow and stretch. So if I'm bored, I did this myself. All right, y'all, I hope that helps. Let me know what you think and we will see you next week. Bye, Popo. -pop.